Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. We are talking about fantastic stories in the Quran. And last time we looked at chapter two, but there's another interesting story uh, within chapter two. Um, there's a verse that speaks about two angels. And Dr. Shabir, the commentaries on that verse are, are pretty interesting um, in terms of the stories that have come out of it. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, Surah 2, verse 102 um, uh, says basically that, uh, you know, the, the people uh, who the Quran is castigating here as disbelievers and rejectors of truth and whatever, um, especially from the people, previous uh, nations, even though they were to follow a book, but instead, uh, but they followed what um, the Satans uh, were reciting concerning the uh, kingdom of Solomon. Um, uh, whereas, um, uh, and, and that also, which, uh, and which was revealed to the, um, to the angels Harut and Marut, so the, the, the Satans are teaching people magic and also what was re re revealed to the angels at Babylon, Harut and Marut. Uh, and uh, the Quran does not go into great detail as to what exactly was taught uh, to these angels and by these angels, uh, but the Quran says that the, the angels did not teach anyone uh, without first telling them that what I'm gonna tell you, this is gonna be a temptation, so don't disbelieve. Mm. Uh, you know, don't, don't use this for evil purposes, basically. Uh, but uh, they learned from the angels uh, that by which they could separate uh, a couple, um, cause a division between husband and, and wife, uh, even though they knew from the start that, um, probably from the warning of the angels, that uh, you know this is not going to be good for them in the end. It's, they're purchasing error here instead of uh, using things for good purposes. So that that's basically it, and we can. You know, if one wanted to to interpret that in a in a modern way, given modern sensibilities and uh, you know our um, um, attraction to science rather than to things which are magical or based on wizardry or anything like this, um, one might say, okay, maybe there is something psychological, uh, you know, that at work here. Like you can say something to people by way of suggestion. And, and that could cause division between them. Like mm -hmm. if you tell the husband, the wife is like this, you tell the wife, the husband is like this, then you can cause them to distrust each other and so on. It doesn't have to be something magical. We see this happening all of the time in our present day society. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to involve any magic. Uh, but now if you want to interpret that in a fantastical way, then uh, you see the commentaries on what they have done. And actually they have gone, uh, way out, and many people would be surprised to know that something like this is in the commentaries because uh, we hear so much about these commentaries, how they're great, and how we should rely on them. And they, you know, these great commentators of the past, they knew the correct interpretation of the Quran. And you, modern day Muslims, you dare not try to interpret the Quran on your own. Any newfangled interpretation must be thoroughly and outrightly rejected because we have a great tradition from 1400 years ago that, uh, you know, establish the meanings of the Quran and those meanings are protected by God and so on. You know, people go to great lengths about this. Uh, but the, the truth of the matter is that the interpreters of the past were humans like us and uh, they were susceptible to all of the uh, attitudes and, uh, and beliefs and so on, which were common in their day. Uh, they were the best of the people and they, they wrote the commentaries. Uh, you, it doesn't take a layman to, a, a layman wouldn't, write a commentary. And even if you, you, know, you put uh, a large number of lay persons together, they're not going to be able to write a, a good, reliable commentary on, on the Quran. Mm -hmm. So we had geniuses in the past who wrote great commentaries. Uh, we might even say that they were inspired by God to write the commentaries. In fact, some of them uh, wrote such marvelous works and such voluminous works that they surprise us to this day. We, we try to imagine how could people have written so much. Like one of the authors that uh, I will mention now, Al Imam Sayyuti from the Middle Ages, he died in the year 1505. And um, in the, in the Hijri, Hijri calendar, he died 911, an easy date to remember. Uh, he uh, wrote more than a thousand books, mm -hmm. and uh, a mass, including a massive commentary on the Quran called Ad Dur Mansur. So if anybody knew the commentary on the Quran, it is Al Imam Sayyuti, master in so many different fields. Um, and yet his and other commentaries uh, of the Quran include, uh, in reference to Surah 2, verse 102, and now this is uh, the whole getting to the point, no, the crux of the matter. <laughs> uh, 
um, they, they, uh, they include fantastical stories about how the two angels came down and, uh, and what was the result of these two angels. So first of all, uh, it is mentioned that, in brief, I can summarize mm -hmm. a large number of reports attributed to companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and other early Muslims, uh, saying that uh, when, when human beings were seen to sin on earth, the angels were priming themselves, we're always serving God, you know, look at these humans. Uh, but the, God said to them, you know what, if you had desires like humans, then you would commit the same error. So God is sympathetic to humans, which is great. Um, but the angels deny this, and God wants to put them to the test. And, uh, or, you know, they, they want to accept God's challenge. Give us the human desires, and, you know, we'll, you see, we will stick to obeying you. So they, they pick two of their best persons. And uh, uh, this would be Harut and Marut. So they came down to earth with human desires. Before long, uh, they noticed a woman who, to whom they were attracted. Now, uh, various reports have it that, uh, some reports have it that this was actually Venus transformed into the form of this beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they became attracted to her and uh, she made a, a condition to them. If you want to be with me, then you are, this is what you have to do. Uh, first of all, to be with me, you'll be committing zina, which is uh, adultery, which is uh, uh, you know, forbidden in Islamic faith. Uh, and you would have to drink alcohol, uh, and and you would have to kill a person. Mm. So you know, killing a person, drinking alcohol, uh, worshiping an idol—this is like Islamic no-nos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and but, in, in, in Islamic thought, angels are thought to be obedient to God, right? They don't—they're right. necess not fallen angels, as in other traditions. That's perhaps. right. That's right. But now uh, they they having been given human desires, and they're so compelled internally to. Um, um, so driven to um, be with this woman that they do all three. You know, mm -hmm. at first there is a lot of denial, but of course, eventually they do the one thing which seems uh, least objectionable. They drink the alcohol, then it becomes easy for them to commit sinna or the adultery, and then they, they saw that somebody uh, would have uh, outed them, so they killed that person, so the murderer. And eventually, they, you know, they even worship the idol. Well, so the Islamic story goes, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can see the Islamic flavor of this story. It is the things which are considered to be so objectionable in Islam that these angels are, are said to do. So how do you think uh, this story came about? Well, again, we cannot know. I mean, I said in a previous episode, yeah. uh, I wish we had the time machine to go and figure it out. But... Uh, we, 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 you know, looking at how the commentators uh, dealt with issues, we can say that there were certain stories which may have been known in the uh, milieu in which the, the commentators operated. Mm -hmm. They incorporated some of those stories and gave them a, an Islamic flavor. Uh, so we have the story of fallen angels in, uh, in Judaism and Christianity. Uh, we uh, maybe in Zoroastrian tradition there is something like this: uh, the uh, idea that a, you know the the woman who uh, was tran Venus transformed here on Earth um, uh, was you know she was given a human uh, a name which is from Persian origin uh, in in some of these stuff here uh, stories and so on. So the, the influences could have been many and varied, but uh, uh, you know, while those who want to reject the stories from within Muslim societies would castigate these as Israeliyat and very simplistically think these come from you know, the bad Jewish people, uh, but uh, the you know, Muslims themselves may have invented these stories or at least developed them once they took them from the milieu in which uh, they were already uh, present. So we cannot blame others. Uh, we have to blame ourselves for, you know, repeating these uh, stories. Mm -hmm. uh, we should have seen through them and seen that the Quran does not require all of this kind of explanation. But the story didn't finish. If you, if you <laughs> wish, we can, we can continue. So, the uh, so what happens in the end now? So the, there, here's this woman who is either a Venus transformed to a woman, or at least a woman here on Earth. Uh, but uh, she had made a condition with them. Uh, that if they wanted to be with her, uh, they would have to teach her uh, what they say in order to ascend and descend for, from heaven to earth. And they taught her. So she used that uh, formula, uh, uttered the words, and she ascended. Uh, but uh, when she wanted to descend, she had forgotten the words. And mm. so God transformed her into Venus. Mm. So, so that's one idea of how you know, she's connected with Venus.
It's interesting As, that they had an understanding of Venus. <laughs> yes. Well, of course, you know, astronomers looked up into the night sky and they saw various planets. And, um, you know, astronomy was uh, ripe in this age, I mean, um, among early uh, Muslims. Mm -hmm. But of course, the, uh, it's not the, the astronomers that they consulted in order to write the commentaries they, they wrote based on uh, popular uh, fiction. Uh, nonetheless, um, the angels, the angels also, they had the formula so they could ascend back into heaven. But no, God caused them to forget the formula. Or according to uh, some narratives, like they found their wings to be ineffective. They could not ascend back. And they were left trapped on earth. And, uh, you know, one narrative in Suyuti's Dur Adur al-Mansur, which I already mentioned, this, he is the most prolific writer known in, in medieval times um, among Muslims, uh, wrote over a thousand books. So in his massive commentary on the Quran, he includes a narrative where uh, is, you know, a, a visitor goes and sees the angels there with wings and everything, flapping their wings, but they are chained in Babylon. And they have been there for, you know, a couple of thousand uh, years. Um, but they're there remaining in, uh, chained and trapped in, in Babylon, in a dungeon. Mm. So, you, you know, all of these, uh, you might ask, why do we need this in, in, in the commentary of the Quran? And many Muslims nowadays would say, why don't we just throw out these, um, uh, fantastical stories and leave the bare commentaries. Uh, but uh, I would say let's rewrite the commentaries based on our modern knowledge. And yes, we will incorporate uh, what is known from the past, uh, but we will be very sagacious in the way we approach the commentaries. We must use modern knowledge uh, over and above these narratives which are passed on from generation to generation, attributed sometimes falsely. Uh, to the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and sometimes even to the Prophet, peace be upon him himself. Um, so being aware and, and uh, being uh, aware not only of the history of this narrative, but also of our responsibility to expound the message of God to the wider world, uh, we need to produce the commentaries afresh. Thank you for that, Dr. You're welcome. On behalf of Let the Quran Speak, I want to say thank you. You've helped us become the most widely watched Muslim TV show in Canada. I want to appeal to you to continue to support us. You can visit our website, QuranSpeaks.com. We also accept e-transfers to iGive at QuranSpeaks.com. And we're now on Patreon, so you can make a monthly contribution. May God bless you and your loved ones today and always.